Hello, my name is Malika McLeod and I am coming to you from Western Australia. I am from Dada. Dada acknowledges the Wajak people of the Noongar Nation. They are the traditional owners of the land on which I am coming to you live from right now. It's where our offices are located and we pay our respect to all of the elders past, past future and present. And we extend our respect to all other Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures across this lovely, lovely nation we've got today, joining us from all corners. And um, I am honoured to join you all today for the little lunch. We do have some housekeeping notes. Those of you who have uh, blocked out your screens, that's okay. But if you do need to get me to slow down, please give me a little wave. Um, and we are joined also by Tony Saar today, who will be my um, my colleague on the in the Fremantle area. Tony will be talking about his filmmaking and his a um, uh, bit of bit of activism, I reckon. Tony, I think we'll probably we might we might touch on a bit of that given our discussions last night over the phone. Yep. Um, so I just want to go through very quickly some housekeeping notes, please. The Little Lunch is being recorded and we're being streamed live. It is available for viewing afterwards on www.llol.com.au. Please keep your, mute, your mics muted when you are not speaking, just to keep it contained to the couple of us who will be speaking. Uh, please introduce yourself in the Zoom chat and say whose country you are on today when you do want to speak to the forum. There is live captioning available. If people click on the captions icon on Zoom, it should be appearing, uh, well, for me, it's at the bottom of my screen. Um, there is also live signing from Susan. Hello, Susan. At Auslan, stage left, uh, it's actually sitting in the middle of my screen. And people participate, participating that way just need to click on Susan's video and pin it. People who want to ask questions, please type it into the Zoom chat or put your hand up using the hand up button. We'll be sticking to the 30 minute time frame today. If you, if you have any tech problems, uh, please contact us on an email. The email is contact, C-O-N-T-A-C-T -T, at A-R-T-S-F-R-O-N-T dot com. That's contact at artsfront dot com. And I think that's all my rules. I'm done. Fantastic. Thank you for sending those through to Norm from Feral Arts. So uh, I, I'm really yeah, honoured to have been asked to join you today. Uh, as I said, my name is Malika. I'm the Director of Client Services at Dada. It's D-A-D-A-A. -A -A. Our website, dadaa.org.au. And you can find some fantastic resources on there, information about our organisation. We're a disability arts, mental health arts organisation in, based in Western Australia. We operate uh, around the state, this massive state that we are here. And we also operate uh, nationally and we have done a lot of international practice over the many years. I think we're into our 27th year. Oh, I may be incorrect there. Um, 27th, maybe, yeah, 27th. So we are also finding ourselves in the uh, 700th day of April. I don't know particularly what day it is, other than it is my husband's, uh, my husband's birthday, so I will remember that. Uh, however, we are facing a pandemic. We are facing something unprecedented in our times, something we have talked about, something we thought we might know what to do around and it has come at us uh, in a very quick way and it's been very exciting to see um, a lot of art services not only not only jump on the front foot and say hey we've been doing stuff that uh, meets the needs of people in lockdown uh, for a really long time we've been working in a digital space for a long time we're good at talking to each other from across the country in our corners. We are good at connecting to others. Uh, but it's also been a situation that has shut a whole lot of us down. And it has impacted on the livelihoods 
on the ability to put out um, great work that may have been just about to, to tour, to be released, to be exhibited. Uh, it has shut down uh, so many incredible um, artists work from being seen by the wider audience of the world. But this is a, a, an awesome opportunity for us to do it better, to get on, get on board with, um, with new technology and to uh, really include people who've never been included before. What it has done, however, has highlighted what uh, we've, we've talked about it for years, the digital divide. It's highlighted uh, the people who have been left behind. But it's if I, I'm I'm a I, I'm a wheelchair user. I'm I'm not sitting on a conveyor belt here. Um, I'm I'm a wheelchair user. I have been since I was a child. Uh, I'm really used to turning up to places and not getting in. I am really used to turning up to places where the access was not right. Um, my colleague today, Tony, uh, Tony will be able to enlighten you on the things that he has faced throughout his life, uh, both as an artist and as an individual, um, just getting through in his world, and the things that we've had to come up with to ensure that we are included. What we know from this pandemic and from the artists out there who do experience disability and mental health conditions is that we are going to have a much more concrete part of this conversation as we move forwards. One, because we've been dealing with this stuff for a really long time. Two, because a lot of us are already using technology and there are some incredible leaders out there who, uh, who have a lot to uh, let the sector know, the industry know, and should be taking a front uh, a front stage position as we move forwards, not being asked to, gener to generously, generously donate their time for free, but to be coming into this forum as consultants, as experts in their field, and as people with a lot to share. Tony, I would love to bring you in now, if we can unmute you, right. and hear a bit about how you are um, operating in this pandemic time. Um, hear a bit about the work that you're doing and at the end I would like to talk a bit about what Dada has been able to do as an art service. Tony, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, just for the record, if you hear a little voice to my right, that's Almaima Awada. She's my support worker, friend and audio describer for today. And so if any questions that are happening, she'll just whisper them in my ear. So if you hear it, just that's what's going on. At the moment, um, during this particular situation, I'm actually stepping into an element that I'm quite enjoying because for I started out in film and when I was younger in my 20s uh, or late, late 30s, actually, uh, early 30s, I should say. And back then I had a little bit of vision and was relatively mobile. Then I lost a lot of vision and I went inside. I, I hid away from the world. I went into lockdown, as you might say, but I did it for about 15 years. And it's only recently, since actually getting a guide dog, that I stepped back into the, into the world out, out there. So it was really, really strange because this thing comes along and everybody else is freaking out because they're stuck inside. Me, it was perfectly normal. You know, I'm just like the, the time is just going, you know. But what I'm learning from both colleagues and other another disability is actually using this technology. What we're doing right now, this this Zoom, this isn't something I did before. This is something I'm learning from from the people around me, and I'm learning just how 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 great it is for someone who actually does like a little bit of isolation and being being blind and there's it's got technologies, voiceover technologies. It's opening my, my world up. It's not stopping me from doing my projects. This thing, it's, it, it, it has its external hindrances that, you know, how the rest of the world is dealing with, with the situation can impact on what I want to do. But as long as the people that I'm working with, such as Almaima or my co-directors, they, they are uh, they, they this disability to connect and use technology 
is just building for me. And it's I can see this becoming my normal normal existence where I'm I'm working in a in a in an online situation because it's I have a guide dog yes but the world is still time consuming when you're blind you it's it it can either be expensive if you want to catch taxis or it can be time consuming when you're taking your dog and you you know you've got to make um you've got to make conditions, you've got to make way, you've got to carry stuff, you've got to take this, that and the other, you've got to always be aware of what you're doing when you're taking your dog. Not that I'd ever, you know, not have him, but um, it's, it's, the world is not necessarily set up for it. Um, when I'm in this situation at the moment, I'm actually having a really, really good time and I'm learning a lot. So, for instance, I'm currently doing a proof of concept film. It's a four minute film, which will be talk. It's a proof of concept for a much larger film called The Roadhouse Blues. Now this thing came right in the middle of editing and that could be a potential disaster. But instead of it being a disaster, if I'm learning how to deal with it, my co-director, who is also my editor, has discovered software that is a plugin for his Pro Tools, which is what we're editing um, the soundtrack on and he's sets that up i link him online and it means that i'm listening in to everything that he is using on his computer in the same quality of sound it's not exporting sound it's a direct streaming like we're doing now but with the and tony tony are you finding as you're going through this process that you're able to um, suggest improvements to the tech that other people are using that will um, ensure that it becomes more inclusive um, for you as a filmmaker, but for others who may be just slowly getting on board? Or is the stuff that you're using way, way in front of where a, a beginner might be? I, I wouldn't say that I'm way in front. I think I'm actually catching up and I'm using and I'm utilizing what other disabled people have been using. You know, that, um, the, because they're ahead of me in that I, when I went insular, I went insular, you know, and now I'm coming out and I'm, and in fact, it was a blind person. Uh, his name is Tommy Edison. And I met him at a film festival in Melbourne and we became very, very good friends. He sat down one evening and taught me how to use the iPhone and it changed my life. You know, that it was, uh, and it was a, you know, it was a fellow blind person who was absolutely tech savvy. And is, he's, he's running with this particular, he's out of America, but he's running with this at the same time as like me. He's using technologies and he's using podcasting and what's not. He's not letting it, he's ahead of the game. And he's my sort of semi-mentor in, in that particular thing that I'm, uh, I'm realising just what potential skills that I've also got to offer. You know, that, uh, that ability to, to converse, because I'm a conversationalist. I like to dialogue with people. And thinking about thinking about that conversation, though, Tony, and going into this new world where, look, I, I really believe that we will see uh, those excuses that employers have had for so long to ensure that people with disability are not part of the employment um, of their organisations, of their, of their big businesses, of their consultancy panels, has been this great misunderstanding about the skills and the competencies that are actually brought by people with disability, uh, people with mental health um, conditions that they are dealing with, the resilience that they bring to any workplace. Um, and I really believe that we are going to, one, we're never going back. We're never, ever going backwards. We are always going to go forwards. And in going forwards, in setting up this new normal, this wonderful new normal, that my, ah, oh, Belinda, hello, Belinda, um, that seeing, seeing uh, a new normal emerge will include uh, a much more diverse workplace that we will be seeing more people with disability and mental health um, being acknowledged as consultants as we move forwards because we will be able to change the way that we think about um, who consultants are and what advice we get in a professional sense uh, and that we can be paying people for their time, um, even though it is being delivered possibly in an online sense, in a digital way, in a way that is more accessible to so many of us. Yes. 
I also think, I think this is, it, you're right. Um, it's actually been, it's been happening for a while though. There's been, there's been a sort of a slow development in, for instance, in accessibility, making areas, making film accessible with Netflix, um, audio description, things like that. There's been, a, there's been a big shift. What's happening more now though, and it needs to be, and I think this particular situation is giving us a bit of, a bit of a push in the correct direction, is giving leadership positions to people with disability. I mean, why is it, I'm pushing, for instance, one of my particular pushes is audio description, should be consultant or even leadership from a blind person because it's they are the ones who are listening to this particular product. It should be they who are saying, okay, let's break this down. What are we actually seeing in full detail? Okay, I don't need to hear that. I don't need to hear just that. And not a sighted person just saying what a blind person should be listening to. And I'm getting a lot of positive feedback over that because I've got a skill. I'm both a filmmaker, but I'm also a blind person that just ipso facto gives me much more of a skill set than 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 if than a professional audio describer might. Absolutely, um, and I think that it's it's that lived experience that we are now in the business of always describing um, what that authentic connection is that someone brings to uh, to any space that we have a lived experience it's not just a person with a disability or a person with a mental health condition that they that they have this lived experience that there is something more authentic than the um, the therapist who doesn't than the family member who doesn't and isn't the focus isn't the one who should be in the spotlight um, but it's that lived experience that the deaf community is of course um, um, leaps and bounds ahead in that regards where it has always been framed as a cultural context um, but disability is a culture yes. uh, we aren't we aren't all the same we don't all have the same background uh, even though Tony and I Tony and I met while describing bar access and mm. ramp access many years ago um, so uh, we do we find ourselves in, in cult cultural spaces having cultural conversations together and that disability is not just about the condition that we bring in. Mental health is not just about the people who have treated us, who've looked after us, but it's the person out front. And it's the culture of, of, of that resilience that they, that they bring to conversations, the culture of how we interact with each other and the ways that we can uh, challenge the non-disabled uh, uh, community out there by dancing on tables and having everyone wanting to save us. I That's think right. we, That's right. we, I mean, we, we, we get to be, we get to be culturally exclusive in this, in this space at the moment, because we are bringing in a range of skills that others are suddenly going to want and not want to uh, necessarily interfere in or try and make our lives better. We're here to try and make some other lives better. That's exactly right. And I think, um, you know, and we can't do it alone, you know, and, and, and I'm finding in my own in my own experiences that there are entities, there are organisations who 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 see this favourably. I mean, at the moment, I'm I'm doing my film based on a grant through Screen West, which is our WA sort of funding agency for various films. Now they've got a big push in terms of diversity. That's a that's a that's a big thing for these guys. I'm on the diversity advisory committee for Screen West that sort of talks issues, diversity, not just disability, but all anything diverse. Um, and, you know, other areas such as uh, film school, uh, film and radio school in Sydney, you know, the AFT area, they've, they're pushing diversity because it's, it's becoming more obvious that there are stories and there are lived experiences that are best told and best understood by those who live those experiences, not external forces. And they're giving opportunities that we need to sort of understand that they're there. And people are wanting to listen. They are wanting to change the way we perceive ourselves, whether it's for me as being a filmmaker and someone wants to hear my voice and, my, and what I've got to say, but also other people, just normal working conditions. People can, people do their jobs, they've got, normal everyday jobs that are just as capable if not better from someone who you know, we've, we've seen it before with the your with with those guys on the spectrum on the autistic spectrum just the, just the impact 
they can have on corporate lives when people understand what they've got to offer. You know, they're, they're, then they, they give them the areas, give their safe rooms, give them their space, and they've got so much to offer. And that's, that's just something we need to sort of broaden into that cultural identity of being, being disabled has yes. got something other. Yes, offer. and I think that it, is, it shows, you know, we're in this beautiful time right now to, to emerge from it triumphant and say, we're not going to leave you behind again. We're not going to move on without you. We're not going to think of, of this uh, very diverse um, and, and culturally significant population of people with a lived experience of disability and mental health as being other. We're not going to move on and, and have, we're sure we're going to have special plans that, that, uh, that may legislate across different states, how we do that inclusion. But we're not going to leave you behind and we are going to ensure that you are part of our thinking as we go into uh, spaces that may be about, you know, what we've always thought of as mainstream festivals, mainstream, it yeah. should be where we are placed. As an, uh, as an artist, Tony, um, how do you think your future of filmmaking and, and perhaps you might want to just mention, we've got 10 minutes, 10 mm -hmm. minutes to go. Um, and I haven't seen any hands come up for questions, so we're good. Um, but maybe if you wanted to talk briefly about what's your, the festival yep. and, and where as a professional artist, um, and maybe um, the, the, fun, the funding ingenuity that you may have dug deep around to ensure things um, continue even as we go into a new world, a changed world, and maybe where the timelines are at for what you are planning to put on. Okay. Yeah, funding is an issue in and of itself, being in this particular time. But the, 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 the other film festival... Is, is something that has been around for a while, but it's, it's out of Melbourne, which I've been, and I've been going to it pretty much every, every festival for the last over 20, 15 years since its inception. And I learned an awful lot because I was involved. I was panel, panel, panel discussions and audio description, um, developing the access, access consultant, writing reports on how I felt, what was, what was missing, what was good. So I learned a lot about this particular festival and then it came over here, at least, at least a sub-branch of it. And I was asked to, to run it, both because of the experience that I'd had in um, my own filmmaking, but also in the, in the time I spent at this particular festival. And also, because of the because I'm because of the fact that I am blind and I can you know I'm an I'm an, I'm an let's be honest I'm an, I'm something that's an oxymoron you know blind filmmaker but it's it's putting someone out there who is so other to run a film festival or to be a, the artistic director for a film festival at least it's making a statement and for me that's um, I want to continue that statement I want the festival to be looking at this this thing called agency you know who's got control over 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 the, the perceptions of disability and i want you know i want to see a lot more um people standing out there and being being showcased for their work whether it's as an individual or whether it's in collaboration and I think that, that that is my aim is to show, and that'll come through with the various panel discussions we want to talk about as well. You know, sure, that, and so and so your role as a professional artist, Tony, do you see that you've got a um, an input there as someone who will be sought after um, in in the new world, in in the things that you've got to add to other festivals? Um, as a professional, yes, but not necessarily as a not necessarily as a filmmaker. I, I actually want to make an impact in the in the in the world of audio description. I want to be able to take those experiences and open up these these areas. They're not they're just not there yet. There's no you don't get like what the deaf community have got their uh, the the Auslan, which is just everywhere now, and we need to get the same thing happening. And I'm probably, as far as I'm concerned, I'm one of the better people 
to actually approach that and my little my little slice of the uh, of the of the of the of the world is to try to improve and open up audio description and make it and normalize it that's the that's that's the thing I'm, I want to have it as a as a as a you know normal everyday part of society whether it's television or whether it's um, on the films short films long form to me they're all the same they all need to be they all need to be accessible to a blind audience and they're not they're just a very very specific number of people get to it and certainly much less here in Australia uh, thank you it. Tony can I can I just ask is there someone who's uh, the chat seems to be going at a bit of a pace down there is there anyone who's been um, checking on that or am I do I need to you want to filter yeah, was there anyone who wanted to ask a question or recopy a question up there um, that maybe Tony can answer? I do have a question. My name is oh, Christy. Great. That's all right. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Christy. I'm a white woman with light brown hair and I have a tall uh, bookcase behind me with lots of coloured books. Um, Thank you. <laughs> um, That's, hey, what uh, I'm That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> well, the question is actually to do with, um, yeah, audio description. So at first when I was listening to audio descriptions, I thought, oh, they're so bland. Like they're not, they're not communicating the energy. And then I read research that said, actually, we don't want the emotion and all that put in we actually just want some details so i'd like to yeah hear some thoughts um from you you know more about what is preferred with audio description at least for you great question um i'm a i'm a i'm a lover of um interpretation i love i love audio description to be a part of the film and so that a blind person is involved i want the right actor and i want i want there to be to be terminology that's describing things and giving it giving it depth, giving it meaning. Very much like if you'd had a very bland narration on a documentary, you'd switch off. You know? And it's the same for audio description, where at least for me and a, and a whole bunch of people around me, and I'm seeing that kind of trend in America, where you don't get very very dry content, you know, dry, dry dialogue. You're getting you're getting depth of of, of dialogue. You're getting word choice, word play. To make to make the experience much nicer. It's 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 almost adding an additional layer to the work. It's it it's is. part of a much deeper, uh, not just understanding for a wider audience, but yeah, it, it definitely we're seeing we're seeing that in how access is being brought in, or just even physical access. That it's not just about ramps and toilets. That it's also about this being able to get up close and personal, and with an audio description, adding a layer as part of a of, of, a, of an arts experience. Exactly. Tony, it, it moves beyond access and into being quite immersive. Can that go too far in the sense of they're actually creating a new work? that you know rather than creatively describing it they're actually making it something different that's just it is yes you're right and i think i mean ideally um audio description should be structured and taken from its inception from the beginning of a film from it which is how i do it you know from doing it now i'm writing writing my audio description as i make my film so that it, it runs hand in hand shot lengths are made um, are, are subverted to make the audio description slide in better. And so instead of making the sound, the audio description work for the film, you make it's a, it's a it's a it's a collaboration between the audio description. But when you're working with a pre-made film, you're right; it can be overdone, and you need to be you need to be clever about it. And you are going to change the film. It's 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 by its very nature that you that you change the film because it means that certain elements that somebody's crafted into their film get left behind because there's audio description in there that's overtaking it. But it's a give and take. Until we get into a world where audio description is so normal that it's like a soundtrack to or to to a film where it's 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 written from the beginning, you know. So it's 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 cohesive. Is that? I think we, um, Tony. I think we actually need to pull ourselves right up right now as we as we reach the we reach the ten thirty stage. Um, can I please thank you for joining me? Thank everyone for coming along today.
hands in the air, shaking like we care about everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, can I throw perhaps Nor Norm at Ferrell? Is there something that you might need to add here or do we sign out? No, it's fine. You can sign out. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you everybody. It's been a wonderful time. Um, you can check us out on the Dada website. You'll find everything you need there. My email address is there. Bye for now. Bye for now.